since the straight line and the parabola are both passing at that point 10. Now, the next thing that I need to worry about is what is the B value there? Because we have to show the equation, right? We have to show the equation of f of x. Now, I need a point anywhere on the graph. If I've got another point except the one we've used so far, for example, point A, we've got the coordinate of A, we know that at A, x is negative 5 and y is 0. So I'll take this as my x value and I'll take this as my y value. It's always, always the case. If you're dealing with graphs, if there's a point on the graph and you're looking for the equation, just steal the coordinates and substitute them for x and y. If you sub them there, it actually simplifies the problem for you. You can be able to apply your algebraic skills and find whatever the unknown you could be interested in. Very powerful. There is no way you leave functions and then you don't find yourself in a position where you must take some random given coordinates and substitute to find the equation. Please keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to come here for y. I'll sub a 0. For x, I'm subbing negative 5 squared plus b. That's b, okay, b times negative 5 plus 10. So let's simplify this. 5 squared is 25. If you double 25, you're going to get negative 50 here, minus 5b plus 10. That's actually 0. I'm adding 5b on both sides. So it's going to be 5b this side, negative 50 and 10 is going to give you negative 40. If you divide 40 by 5, your b value comes out as exactly negative 8. Therefore, the conclusion is that the graph of f of x is equal to negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 10. And that will be the equation of this graph of f of x. Very powerful. Make sure that when we ask you to prove something, it ends up looking exactly like what we want it to look like. If it doesn't, it means you probably made a mistake somewhere. So negative 2x squared is what we're seeing there. We're happy about it. That's minus 8x is what we calculated. And then we also have a plus 10 at the end. So everything is working out pretty well for us. Right. The third question says calculate the coordinates of m, the turning point of the graph of f. Okay. So let's go back to the drawing. What do we know? We've just been told that m is a turning point. Now, you guys should know how to find the turning point of a parabola. There's many ways of asking you for the turning point of a parabola. One of them is just directly asking you to find uh, the coordinates of the turning point. What's the formula that you use in order to find the coordinates of the turning point? So for 5.3, I know the equation. I know that in order to find the x-coordinate, it's always negative b all over 2a. Alternatively, you could have obviously found the derivative. You could have just taken the derivative of the graph and equated it to zero and solve. This is an alternative, which we're stealing from the concept of calculus. Either one of the two would work. It will always give you the correct answer. All right, so let's take this one. Negative is negative. The b value is also negative 8 divided by 2 times negative 2. What is the x value that you're ending up with here? You'll agree with me that we end up with exactly an x of 8 over 4, which is going to be negative 2. That's the x value of the turning point. So that means at m, we've got an x now of negative 2. We are looking for the corresponding y value. How do you find y every time you've got x? Just take this coordinate, x coordinate, and substitute in the original equation and try to see what the answer is going to come out as. So now I'm going to ask what is f of negative 2 on the graph of f of x, which is going to be negative 2 into negative 2 squared minus 8 into negative 2 plus 10. I'm basically doing nothing here except simplifying stuff by substitution and performing basic algebraic calculations. So negative uh, 2 into negative 2 squared minus 8 into negative, not 8, but 2 there. Our x value is simply a 2. You're sapping back to the equation. And then we've got a plus 10 at the end. If you press the equality sign, you're ending up with an answer that says 18. We've got 18 there, which is a very simple solution because it's substitution into the calculator. You guys can be able to get that. So the coordinates at the turning point come out as exactly 18 and uh, negative 2 is the x coordinate. So we can jump right into the next question, which is question 5.4. Okay, the nice parabolic question here. Testing a lot of things and trying to see if you guys are aware of what is possible, what we can ask. And you will check and see that they'll always ask you for intercepts. They'll always ask you for the turning points. They may ask you to find the equation of the graph. These are the basic things that they ask all the time. 5.4 says, if the maximum length of HL is found when X is negative 2.5. So where is this HL? HL is the vertical line that happens to be parallel to the y-axis that we've been told about earlier. Okay, so if the maximum length is found when x is negative 2.5, find the maximum length of hl. 
All right, cool. So how do you work with this maximum length story? If you want to find the maximum length, you just have to do the top graph minus the bottom graph. That's the equation of HL. How do you phrase it? Well, pretty simple. You're going to say HL is always top graph, all right? All these vertical uh, lengths are found using this idea. Top graph minus the bottom graph. Why? Because it's just doing y value at one graph minus the y value at another graph. So top graph minus bottom graph, which means on top we've got the graph of f of x, which is the parabola, minus at the bottom we've got the graph of g of x. What is our f of x? Well, our f of x is simply negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 10 minus our g of x. Always put it in brackets. If you don't put it in brackets, you will not subtract correctly. Please be careful of that trade offs. Right, plus 10. Okay, so if you simplify this, negative 2x squared doesn't have a friend. You will notice that this negative 8x here will subtract the 2x there. You're going to get a 10 out of this, all right? You're going to simply get a negative 10x. 10 minus 10 will be 0. So the length of HL can be expressed as negative 2x squared minus 10x. Now, when we are here, just want to draw your attention to something that can happen. Every time we get here, certain things can happen. We either going to give you HL and ask you for X. I could have given you the length and asked you to solve for X. If I don't do that, I may give you HL and say HL is this and say find X. That's the first route I can take. If I don't take that route, I'll give you X. I'll say X is this and say find HL. What is HL? Which means if you know X, you can find HL. The third route, they may say find the maximum length. They may say find the maximum length of HL, in which case you will then need to apply your knowledge of calculus. You just have to find the derivative of this particular thing. Since it's HL, you will derive it by doing the derivative of HL. So you'll do d over dx, okay, of HL, and then equate that to zero. Solve for x after finding x, Resubstitute back to find the corresponding y value. So it always takes one of these three turns, either the first or second or the third. Which one is it taking in this case? It's the middle one, because it told us that the maximum length happens when x is negative 2,5. So we are looking for hl. One small substitution. Substitution, substitution. Very simple stuff. Almost all the time, that's all you do when you're doing these things. So I've got negative 2.5 here, squared, minus 10 into negative two and a half. We are just looking for the value of HL. So I'm gonna now call my calculator back. Like we say, it's an instrument, not a monument. So you guys need to use it. Negative 2.5, close bracket, not 25. Backspace, be careful when you type in your calculator as well. Under exam pressure, these kinds of mistakes happen. But again, we're on tenderful life. We're just sharing ideas with you to make sure that you guys understand how do you position yourself when you're working with these things. So close bracket, What's the answer that we're getting? We're getting 12 and a half. That's basically what you're ending up with. You can put it as a fraction. If they ask you to round off to decimal, just respect whatever request that the examiner might have on that particular question. All right, so we got 2.5. 12.5 um, is basically what we're ending up with. So absolutely awesome. That's the length of HR. Now, the closing question in this particular awesome question that is based on a straight line and a parabola it's a very powerful question, and I want us to look at it and pay some close attention to what is being asked. 5.5 says the graph of f of x and g of x are transformed to create the graphs of h and t, such that h of x is equal to f of x plus k. Okay, let's go back to that. So now they are telling us that h of x is what you get when you take the graph of f and then you add or subtract something, a particular constant, okay? Keep that in mind. And then they say the graph of t of x. So t of x will be what you take when you take the graph of g, all right? Take g of x, and after taking g of x, always make sure that you add or subtract something. That's how you're going to get the graph of t. All right, so they're saying to us, determine the value of k and d. So we want to know what must k be and what must d be, okay? Such that h and t have exactly a common x-intercept. So we want them to have a common intercept. Now, for you to be able to work with this, you need to first of all go and check the graph of f and try to form this. You see, and they're saying they're going to have one common x-intercept. 
First of all, this is a problem for a parabolic question. Why is it a problem? Because we know that quadratic functions normally have two x-intercepts. The examiner says exactly one. What does that mean? That means your graph is not going to be a normal quadratic that cuts x-axis twice, but it's going to cut x-axis once. The only way you can cut the x-axis once from the graph of f is if you go back to the drawing, let's go back to the drawing, you will see that this graph cuts x at b, it also cuts x at a. If I wanted to cut x at one point, I need to physically shift it down a certain number of units. Very important for you to keep in mind. Now, that's another thing that is very, very important that you need to understand, that this kind of transformation is about shifting a graph up or down. You want to move it up or you want to move it down. Please keep that in mind, okay? But the one that we have for g of x is not about going up and down, but this kind of a shift inside the brackets like this is when you physically shift the graph left or you're shifting the graph to the right. So all you need to do is check, are we basically doing the transformation inside the brackets by x or are we doing it outside the bracket of uh, f of x, which means like in the case of k, we will be moving up and down, but in the case of d, we'll be moving either left or to the right. All right, that's the first thing that you guys needed to know. Now, let's go back and check. If we wanted the original graph to cut the x-axis once, how many times must we shift it and in what direction must we lift it? Uh, shift it. Remember, this is how the graph of f of x originally looked. We know that here it's got a y value of 18. The only way I can move it from that and then get it to cut x once is if I get it to be like this. It must just touch the x-axis at one point. So that means we need to move it down. But how many times must we move it down? We must move it down 18 times. If you move it 17 times, it will not be on the x-axis. You want it to be here. So we must move it down 18 times which means the k-value has to be negative 18. Why negative? If it's a minus, the graph goes down. Very important for you to always make sure you don't confuse the shifts left and right and the shifts up and down. If it's a plus, it goes up. If it's a minus, it goes down. But for the axis, it's a bit different. If it's plus, you're not going right, you're moving left. If it's a minus, you're not moving left, you're moving to the right. So please keep that in mind, very powerful. Okay, so this is how the graph would look of h. So this is what basically h of x would look like since we wanted to have only one x-intercept. Now let's go to t. They say t, they're transforming g now. They're transforming g. Now you have to remember that the x-coordinate on f was negative 2, which means if you move the graph straight down, it is just going to touch x at negative 2. But where was the straight line? Let me put the straight line in the green. The straight line was passing there and it was also passing at some value 10 there. The x-intercept of the straight line, because clearly for g, we are moving left and right. We obviously need to move the green graph to the right. We are moving it from an x-intercept of negative 5 to an x-intercept of negative 2. That means you must move it 3 units to the right because you're moving it from here. You want to take it this way. Please keep that in mind. Very powerful. So that means if you want the straight line to move from where it is so that it's here, because we want them to share that x-intercept. We want them to pass through the same x value. So the straight line moves from negative 5. It's going to negative 2. How many moves must we make to the right? We must make three moves to the right. Now, how do you write that? When you want to say three moves to the right, just tell people that the d value has to be not a plus value, but a negative. Remember, if it's a minus, it's not moving left, it's moving right. How many times? Three times. And that will be the value of D, and K equals to negative 18 will be the value of your K value. Right.